and today we are going to be talking about oh god I forgot what I was teaching them hey hi everybody welcome back to making stuff with Mrs. Barodi I'm Mrs. Barodi and today we're going to be talking about positive and negative space and I'm going to show you a couple ways that you can practice with it and how it's ultimately going to help you when you make things like landscapes and portraits and still lifes and all those fancy schmancy artworks that you're going to make someday all right let's get started All right, ladies and gents, you can see here I have my fabulous picture with space on it because like I said, we're learning about positive and negative space. Now when we talk about that in art, positive space refers to the main focus of a picture, while the negative space refers to the background or the space around and between the objects in a picture. So looking at our painting here, space, those white letters, that's our focal point. That's our positive space. That's where our eyes go to first. While our background, the blues and greens, that's going to be our negative space. And that doesn't mean it's, it's bad. It's part of the picture that helps us identify that focal point. So I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can practice with this at home and then a very sort of complicated one that you can give a try if you feel like you're up to the challenge, okay? And again, like most of my projects, I'm always starting with my handy dandy pencil. I got my 2H, it's a nice middle of the road pencil that's gonna help me out, and my eraser, and you can tell I've been erasing a lot. It's starting to get really wore down there. Now, I snuck into school with permission and I picked up some of my stencils that I've made for the school year. If you don't have stencils at home, there's lots of other things you can use and we'll talk about that in a minute. So here I have my rectangle, my triangle, and uh, my circle and my rhombus. And I'm gonna take these and sort of lay them around on top of each other to make a random shape. Cause we're not looking at the inside, we're looking at that outside edge. And I have an example here that I made earlier and cut out. So I have my rectangle, you can see that's where that was. My triangle was over here. My little rhombusy shape was there. And my circle, I traced a couple of times for that. And then I used a Sharpie marker just to help me stay organized and make sure I was cutting on the right line. And I cut out my crazy stencil. So if you don't have stencils at home, you could use uh, like a note card and uh, a roll of tape and maybe a pencil sharpener. Look at that. Now I can trace those things and I have my stencil. If I don't have scissors, I could do this directly on the paper. I don't have to worry about cutting out the stencil. The reason I cut out a stencil is because I knew I'd have to make a few different examples till I was happy with what I had. So I'm gonna take this stencil and I made it in such a way that I know it's gonna fit on half a piece of paper, okay? There's a little bit of space all around. So I'm gonna take my pencil and I always use pencil because I can erase this. If I make a mistake with Sharpie, I'm locked in, there's nothing I could do. See how I got a little squiffy there? That's where I could come through with my eraser and erase my line. And because I'm using a 2H and I'm pressing down very gently, my lines will be pretty light. And I want you to notice what I'm doing with my hand. I'm moving it around my stencil, but when I'm moving this hand, this hand's holding the stencil down. So it's always gonna stay in one place. And I like to move my fingers around, especially on tricky sort of stencils like this, where there's lots of nooks and crannies and I might need to hold my paper down a little bit. I just made this stencil on regular paper. It's not a nice stiff cardboard or anything. So chances are it might move a little bit. Oop. Okay, so I think I've traced it all, but just to make sure, I put my hand here and I just gently lift it up and kind of double check. I missed a line. Oop. So I know I got that side. I know I got that side. So bam, now, I got my shape. Step number two, we are going to fold this paper in half. Just a gentle fold. We don't need to be super perfect or accurate or anything. Now I have a fold there and I can take my pencil very gently and just lightly kind of go over that line so I know where it is. Okay, now I have my jar full of Sharpie permanent marker things. I'm gonna use a regular Sharpie marker for this. If you don't have black, you could use a red marker. You could use a blue crayon. What if you only have green colored pencils? 
I don't know why, but use those. You really only need one color. I'm using black because it just stands out and helps you guys see things a little bit more. And because I don't want to ruin my table, scrap paper underneath just in case. Now, here's what we're going to do. In our space picture, the whole background is colored, the word is not. We're gonna do that on here, but we're gonna flip flop them. So on this half, I'm gonna color inside my shapes. On this half, I'm gonna color outside of my shapes. And that's gonna um, help us see our positive and negative space kind of in a new way. So if you watch my video on how to draw a perfect straight line, you know we're always pulling our marker, we're never pushing it away from us. So I'm gonna turn my paper as I work my way around the shape because that helps me be able to pull towards myself and be comfy. Curved lines are a little tricky. Oh, see I messed up a little bit. That's okay. Always go back and fix it. And I'm gonna trace all the way around the whole shape even though on half of it I'm coloring the inside and half of it I'm coloring the outside. And this is sort of gonna help us look sort of like an optical illusion. And when I show you another one of my examples, you're really gonna see that optical illusion. It's gonna be cuckoo banana cakes. And believe me, it took me a long time to do that one. All right, so just about traced. Always pulling my marker. Whoop. Okay, so I'm gonna do the outside. And I'm gonna look around and see maybe where I made some mistakes. So that part got a little bumpy. So I think maybe I'm gonna switch and do the outside of this one just to make my heart happy and to keep things a little neater. I would be sad if that kind of showed up in my final picture. So you can see, I, it looks like I'm scribbling, but I'm always moving to the white space and I'm coloring at least in one direction. So if you wanna be very tricky, you could do this. A little more time consuming, a little easier to see your mistakes. All right, so we're gonna fast forward through this so you can kind of see the finished project in just a second. Two hours later. And voila, here we have our finished positive and negative space practice drawing. So you can see this side, I left the inside white and colored the outside black. Here the inside is black and the outside is white. So if we look at half of the picture, you might say that white space, that's the focal point. Some of you might say the background is. If we look at this side, same thing. Is that black now the focal point or is around the shape the focal point? Looking at them together, that's kind of our optical illusion. We're not sure where our focal point should be. And that's the key to using just one color. As you move on and start using this in your drawings and paintings, you can make it as complicated and as colorful as you want. But practicing it, believe me, you wanna practice it, using one color is what you wanna do. So like I said, this is what I use stencils for, but you could be using other random things around your house to trace. An example of that is kind of a bigger practice drawing, again, just black and white. But for this one, I have, I think it's an old vase, I don't know. I found it and it was a perfect circle. So I took that and traced it with my pencil. Remember, we're always tracing with pencil first in case we make a mistake. And believe me, I made a few on this one. So I traced my circle and all I did with it was make sure that it's always touching the other circle. So as I moved away, then it got a little more complicated. I had to make sure that it was touching all the circles around it. So for this, I traced it. Then I traced all the circles with a Sharpie marker and I used a finer one. And then I came through and colored in around. So for me, the focal point is the circles because they're nice and white and bright against that black background. A little bit trippy with our eyeballs, a little bit optical illusion-y, but if you want a challenge and you want to make it even more complicated, instead of coloring lines in solidly, you could add lines to either the negative or the positive space. Some of you are looking at this and going, oh my God, my eyeballs. So for me, the stars, kind of the focal point, but then other times I look at it and that background with all those crazy lines is the focal point. So for this, I took my star stencil, I definitely didn't do this freehand, and I just made sure that it was touching here and there and it made these really interesting shapes in the background. So you can keep it as simple or as complicated as you want. It could be as simple as tracing one shape or overlapping them folding that paper in half and then coloring one half on the outside, one half on the inside. 
You could trace one shape repeating, repeating, repeating over and over again and color in the background. I could have left that white and colored in all the circles. I didn't want to because that was going to take too long. But if I did that, let's imagine those are now black and the background is white. Where is our focal point going to be? And then finally, if you want to make it a little bit more difficult for yourself, add a pattern or something in the background. You don't have to copy my pattern. I've had a lot of practice at this. Look at all those lines. Look how pretty straight they are. Mm -hmm. So you could do a pattern of something else or try and do this. Man, more power to you. I want to see what you guys do. Whatever you do, make sure that you keep being safe, you keep being kind, and definitely keep being creative. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!